the two early top 25s that have come out already. I, I'm going to read off some of these to you uh, because I've done the composite already. The 10 biggest... Well, here, let me let me give you, a, 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 I guess, a list of exactly who I've got in this because I averaged them all out. Uh, we have got... Da, da, let's see. We've got uh, The Athletic, Pat Forty over at Sports Illustrated, Brett McMurphy at Action Network, 247 Sports, ESPN with Mark Slaybaugh, RJ Young over at Fox Sports, Athlon Sporting News, Dennis Dodd at CBS, and On3. All right, here is the top 25. Let's go through the top five as far as their average. Alabama 1, Ohio State 2, Georgia 3, A&M 4, number 5, Clemson. A&M and Clemson up kind of high. How you feel about those two? A&M, I think it's probably fine there. There's no chance on earth I'd have Clemson at 5. Are you worried at all about Elko being gone from A&M, or do you think that the talent level has risen so much and DJ Durkin coming in is going to be going to be good for him? I, I just A&M at 4 just seems a little... A little high, of course. When you look at the rest of the list, I don't know exactly. I I think I think DJ Durkin's a a really, really, really good defensive coach. I can. I, I don't. I don't think they're gonna they're gonna lose any sleep over that. You you might be right about that. Uh, number six in the uh, in the aggregate in the um, in the composite here: Notre Dame at six, Utah at seven, Michigan eight, Baylor nine, Wake Forest. In your top ten, any of those feel like uh, maybe they they might drop back a little bit? No, no, I kind of I kind of like this bunch, and I think and I would have all of these teams. I know it's going to make me sound like an asshole. I'd have all these teams over. By the I, way, I kind of tend to agree. Clemson lost their their I, I offensive think I would and have defense between fifteen and eleven. That I think that's a fair, honest, real assessment of that team and that program. That is giving a lot of credence to the talent they have because I don't know that I believe that you could just replace Brett Vittables with a guy, okay? Because that's what they did. They replaced him with just a dude. Yes. I mean, it, they it, didn't go out and get staff a DJ Durkin. Yeah. They, they just got in-staff guys that they're hoping they learned enough when Brent was there to, to make it work. So let's do 11 through 15. We've got Michigan State at 11. I... I mean, they're they're losing uh, they're losing the wide receiver. They're losing Kenneth Walker the third. Lost a couple of guys off the defense, but they are kind of restocking through the transfer portal. I don't know that you can do that long term, but we'll I think see. you can. And the problem is, is how many people knew Kenneth Walker the third's name before this year? Agreed, agreed. I mean, okay. they, they hit yeah, a home run it. with that. That's somebody, somebody. But yeah, but I think some of that is Mel Tucker. He's a really good coach. He's a really good worker. And, and, and he's building something there. He's having to do it through the transfer portal because he can't recruit at the level he needs to, and, and that's fine. But I, I just I just think Mel's going to be fine. I don't. I, if this isn't going to be based on the athletes. This is a I trust Mel. And that makes sense. At number 12, Oklahoma State. 13, Oregon. 14, Arkansas. 15, Oklahoma. I, you know, like I, I, initially I thought, okay, Oklahoma – that might be a little high with them completely. They've got a bunch of guys in the transfer portal, but they're also getting a lot of guys in. And when I realized, okay, they got Brent Venables, and they do have some talent on defense, he might be able to to whip something up there. And he brought I think in, they're going to look very different. Uh, very different, but also he brought in Jeff Lebby, and Lebby brought in Dylan Gabriel. So, yeah. I, you know, if Gabriel is anything like what he was at UCF, I, I still think Oklahoma's going to compete for the Big 12. Like I think they're going to be just well, fine. They're going to be in. They're going to be in the conversation. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I think Oklahoma's just fine. The the one of those bunches that I, I would I would actually be more concerned about is Oregon. Uh, most certainly, most certainly. Uh, and and for me, Oklahoma State has kind of been a product of Jim Knowles here lately. It, it has not been the offense that they've been winning with. I'm curious what they look like on defense without him. I you know we'll see, but Oregon for sure at 13 is. I mean, you're bringing in Dan Lanning, really young, first-time head coach. I know that his defense just won a national championship, but again, we, we've said we've said this on the show so many times. Uh, trusting a a head coaching position to the guy that does the same thing as the guy that he was coaching under, like Kirby Smart is the one who crafted that defense at Georgia. It was not Dan Lanning. That's not to say Lanning isn't a good coach. I just, nope. you know. I wonder about that one. 
Well, yeah. Well, it's, it's yeah. I mean, he's unproven. How many how many great coordinators have flailed out as coaches? Like it, it happens all the time. It happens every year in the NFL. Happens every year in college. And it might be That's, it might be why Brent may not be super successful at Oklahoma. We don't know yet, right? Yeah, there's a world that that happens. At number sixteen, we got NC State. We got Iowa at seventeen, Wisconsin eighteen, Houston at nineteen, and then Kentucky at twenty. All those sound about right. Yeah, I mean, I would probably bump NC State up. I think they're 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 really good. I think they're bringing a bunch of guys back. I would probably bump Kentucky up a little just yeah. because I. I've grown to where Mark Stoops is in that world where I just trust him. Well, and they've got a they got a lot of young defenders. They're bringing back Will Levis. Yeah, they you they do lose Wandale Robinson, but they got both of their coordinators back. Brad White is going to stay there. Liam Cohen. The but how many times have we said Kentucky is going to hurt because they're not the factory that everybody else is, and they're losing this guy, they're losing that guy. And you know what? Losing those guys didn't matter, and they just found a way to replace them. Like, yep. at what point do they start getting that level of credit that LSU and Georgia and Auburn get for, well, we lose guys every year, but we just roll new ones in? And that's that's the thing. Like, the when fact do we that- realize Mark Stoops <laughs> is doing that? Well, when, like, when's the last time Kentucky was even ranked in a preseason poll? Really? Like, I, I, I do I, not remember. Probably, probably never. Probably when- never. But therein lies the problem with all the preseason polls. Exactly, exactly. And yet, here we are. I mean, Kentucky's in. They were in every preseason poll other than Dennis Dodds. And they ranged, gonna be, I've only seen one of these lists that you, you named off out of all the people that you're given the aggregate for. So there, there's going to be one glaring team that I think is left off this team that I think is a top 15 team and has the potential to be a top 10 team. So. All right, let's 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 roll through 21 through 25. Cincinnati at 21. Uh, and they lose a ton, man. I mean, just a it, a whole bunch off that team. And they, and they might not be done losing, okay? Yeah. No, you're you're not wrong because it, we don't know that the coaching carousel is done yet. So we'll we'll that's, see what happens. It. So coaching carousel is definitely not done. Yeah, we we got to see what the NFL does uh, as far as you know FBS spots and whatnot. Cincinnati's offensive coordinator uh, is obviously the new LSU offensive coordinator. We hadn't talked about that one yet, but. We'll get there. We'll get there. We've got plenty of time after uh, all the, the season stuff is done. Uh, Tennessee at 22, BYU at 23, USC at 24, and Ole Miss at 25. Okay. At, so, that's, so the team that, that, that I – the one list I saw, BYU was not on it. And I thought, well, I think that's not just wrong. I think that's big boy wrong. It, yeah, I, I tend to agree. They've got a lot of guys that are coming back next year, trying to, and obviously you can't do this based on their schedule, but the schedule was uh, helpful this season, right? I, I'm I'm curious what they're going to look like going forward. I, I, I think they're going to look like a team that's really tough to beat. So yeah, this next year uh, they they've got at USF, they host Baylor, they play at Oregon, they've got Wyoming at home. Utah State at home, Notre Dame on the road, Arkansas on the oh no, sir, Arkansas at home, at Liberty, East yep. Carolina, at Boise State, and, and then they close with Dixie State and at Stanford. That's a hell of a schedule. No, Ooh. it's an unbelievable schedule. But I'm just telling you, I think they're a really good football team, and none of those teams are going to be glad they're playing. I know you. You certainly got that right. You have certainly got that right. I'm not um, saying they're going to win all those games. I'm saying they're going to go undefeated. But that's going to be a team. That could easily have three losses, and everybody's saying it's managed to a top ten team. I'm curious what Ole Miss looks like without Matt Corral next year. Like I'd imagine yeah, they're going to be just fine. I, I am okay. Our, our our definition of just fine are different. I, I think a the loss of DJ is big. Yep. And and I think the the loss of, of Corral is big. I I think Corral is the best quarterback they've had since Eli Manning. Yes. I don't think you just replace that overnight with nothing. Like agree. Now, obviously, transfer portal, all that kind of stuff. Like, there are still guys out there that could maybe fit. They're not going to be does. bad on offense. But, yeah. man, I, I, I love, and I love Lane. It's not a knock on Lane. This is a rotation of talent at key positions, which are the quarterback, the most important position on the field, and your defensive coordinator, which, which is a big deal since that's the, that is a place you have the least amount of actual talent. Yes. So, yes. Therein lies 
USC being at 24, I think that's one that, uh, that by the end of the season could be ranked pretty highly. If but, Lincoln uh, Riley gets, uh, so gets Caleb Williams, like that could end up being a big deal. So USC schedule. Yeah, is I mean, not we're all just tough. assuming that's all in Lincoln Riley, right? Yes, yes, 100%. That's just 100% all Lincoln. Yeah, I mean, USC was not in three of the different polls, and they ranged anywhere from number five all the way down to 25 in the ones that they were in. So their their rankings were 13, 23, 22, 25, 21, 14, and 5. I mean, people are just all over the board with them. And I get it, because they got talent, and now you've actually got a coach there uh, I just I think it's going to be a little bit before they end up being like a, a top five, top ten team. Uh, but could I see them ranked in the top fifteen at some point this season? Like at, at, maybe at the end of the season? Yeah, absolutely. Like at, the Pac twelve, it is gettable. I, I need to see I need to see Lincoln Riley in a situation where you might have to reload. This might not just be we're a quarterback away, and if we get Caleb Williams, everything's fine. I don't know how much talent they have on offense across the board, talent wise, offensive line, that kind of stuff. I don't know what their defense looks like. Not that I've ever expected him to have a good defense at all. I'd be real careful before because he took over a machine that was fully loaded at at, at Oklahoma. Uh, yeah, oh, Oklahoma. And and you know now he's actually having to do a little bit of rebuilding. There's a world where the coverage is fine at USC. You know that that world might be real. I, I think it could be I, fine. I don't, I don't know that. I think it could be fine enough for the Pac-12. Right, I mean they're they're out of conference foe that is that is the biggest issue is Notre Dame every year and they've got a new head coach. Uh, I'd imagine Notre Dame will be perfectly fine under Marcus Freeman, but again, first time head coach, young guy. Uh, we'll see, you know, what ends up happening with uh, with him. But uh, but looking at let's see USC schedule for next season, they open up with let's see. They open up with Rice. They play at Stanford. They got Fresno State, which is not going to be an easy thing. Jake Hayner's coming back to play for Jeff Tedford. They play at Oregon State, Arizona State at home, Washington State at home, at Utah, at Arizona, Cal, Colorado, at UCLA, and then Notre Dame at the end of the season. I mean, it, they could have enough talent to to win nine, ten games out of that. I mean, they're I agree obviously with that. they could I agree also, with that, but winning nine or ten games ain't top twenty five teams. Yeah. If you're a nine-win team in the Pac-12, you're not in the top 25. Yeah, I don't think you're wrong there. I don't think you're wrong. Let's, uh, let, me, let me read through the rest of these that received votes in, in one poll or another. Pitt was number 26, Penn State 27, Miami 28, Texas 29, LSU 30, uh, Minnesota 31, Coastal Carolina 32, Purdue 33, Fresno 34, Florida 35, Kansas State, Air Force, Nebraska, South Carolina, and UCF uh, all basically had the same average there. So, uh, so wait a minute. Was UTSA anywhere in that? UTSA is nowhere in that. Wow. So they, they lose uh, several guys. I think they're bringing like – are they bringing almost everybody back? No, they brought pretty much everybody back this year. They Sincere McCormick is headed to the NFL draft. He, I think he was kind of the face of uh, – of that team, yeah, um, they're losing McCormick, but I thought he was the only big loss. Let me let me check. I don't know that Frank Harris is coming back, but we'll we'll see. Uh, along with that, uh, I think they lose several guys on defense, and I think they lose a couple of offensive linemen. For the most part, yeah, I think like the the big names that everybody knows. Uh, I think. Let's see. He was a redshirt junior in the 2020 season. So, yeah, Frank Harris uh, was a senior this past year. So he might have a COVID year, maybe. But according to where he sits, you know, as far as his eligibility, it looks like he's out. So they'd have to do a new, you know, new quarterback, et cetera. I, I trust Jeff Trailer to have a a good football team, but no, you know. I do too. But if they were bringing everybody but McCormick back, while McCormick's amazing. You know my feelings on running back. Yeah, most certainly. I feel like I feel like a great coach will find somebody that can do what he does, or kind of replace him in the aggregate. They'll find a couple of running backs that can kind of equal what he did. The uh, the only Mountain West team that got a single vote was Air Force, and they were number twenty four in uh, Brett McMurphy's poll. Like that's the only Mountain West school that actually got a vote. 
disrespect for the Mountain West. Maybe they were probably the fourth or fifth best conference in the league this year. Yeah, you uh, you are not wrong about that. I, I think that's a big thing that people overlook when they do these early top 25s. Uh, they just don't pay attention to, you know, somebody is going to be good from these from these G5 schools or from these G5 well, conferences. Well, not just somebody. Look how many teams were good in the Mountain West this year. Yeah. Like, go look at the Mountain West's record against the Pac-12 this year and tell me the Pac-12 is a Power 5 team. <laughs> With a straight face, honest as this can be, go look at those records and tell me you think the Pac-12 is better because they played it on the field and they didn't equal better. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. And if you throw boy, if you throw BYU in that, it throws the numbers way the hell off. Yeah, and, and of course, like BYU in at number twenty three here, that makes sense to me, right? Like at BYU is a really really good football team, but they don't play a Mountain West schedule. Like I lied, I lied. Fresno State uh, was ranked number twenty two in Brett McMurphy's. They are a Mountain West as well. Okay. So Fresno and Air Force were the two I'm states. Be shocked that nobody. Nobody watches the Mountain West in this damn con- it, 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 and these people cover the sport. <laughs> it's it's shocking, isn't it? It really is. They uh, only do it for a living, Gary. I mean, <laughs> I, I know I have high standards, but it's it's kind of it, it's, it's it's ridiculous. It's not like they're it's not like they're 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 a pot smoking moron that that does it from his his attic studio one day a week and then talks on the phone two other days. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.